Here we meet again. <laughs> yeah, the time is perfect for you to start, so go ahead. And wow. All right. <laughs> so um, we heard a lot about bubbles. Um, now we're uh, going to talk about helping people make a living around KDE um, and the research and planning uh, we've been doing over the uh, last few months around that topic. So a bit of background. Um, KDE is almost 25 years old. And one of the uh, things that's really important uh, for us is keeping people around, right? Um, giving them the opportunity to um, contribute to KDE long term. As many people start contributing to KDE during their school or university years, um, Many of them tend to drop out as they uh, leave university, get jobs, and so on. And one of the things we are trying to do is um, making it easier for people to, to stay around in KDE by making their living with work around KDE. So over the last few months, we uh, did interviews with people from both inside KDE and outside KDE to better understand everyone's view on the topic, and then um, aggregated that and, and expanded it with the um, past experience that the board uh, members had uh, through their own jobs, through their own um, experience with contributing to KDE. And um, out of this process came a number of options we looked at um, for how to make this happen, how to help people make a living around KDE. And I will go through uh, those options, and then Neofitas will later talk a bit about um, what, we, what we ended up. So the first option we looked at was that uh, we could have KDE EV, the organization behind KDE, um, hire people to work on some specific apps or Plasma. Um, to make this viable and make this work, we would need to find ways um, in the community to decide which apps um, and features or bug fixes we actually want to spend um, the money we have on. Because while we do have uh, some money, it's not unlimited, of course. Um, and on the other hand, we would also need to make this attractive and secure enough for the person who takes on this position that they that they want to do this, that they want to potentially give up another job um, for that. From the organizational side, it is important for us that we make this sustainable um, because we don't want to hire someone for six months and then let, uh, have to let them go. Of course, that uh, is not who we want to be as an organization. Um, and then we would also want to have this have enough of an impact on the specific app or Plasma to make this worthwhile. Because if at the end of the day, you're not seeing um, the benefit of uh, that time investment, then that's kind of sad and, and not useful. And then in a similar way, um, we would then need to manage the expectations from people, how much um, of a change this can actually achieve. Now, if we did this, um, we're pretty sure on the positive side that our products would improve, right? We would make our um, apps or Plasma better and um, bring increased momentum into the product, uh, into the project. And it would also give us the opportunity to do project-specific fundraising. So we could go out and um, say, hey, here, help us make um, Quenview better today, um, help donate to that specific um, effort. On the negative side, um, we might not be able um, to find the people who are suitable to do that work um, to do this um, for shorter periods of time. And as an organization, we would have to deal with all the hiring and people management associated with it. Another option we've looked at um, is very similar, but here we would not hire people to work on um, apps or Plasma, but instead on the base software. Base software here being um, uh, Qt frameworks, um, 
all these non end product components that um, that we're relying upon. Um, the what we would need to make this happen is very similar to to the previous one, except that here it will be a bit harder to um, show the benefit of this and, and see the impact of this. And it would give us less of an opportunity to uh, do specific fundraising around this. A different option we looked at was um, that KDEV supports people in applying for what we would call lightweight grants. So grants that have very little overhead um, for applying to them and then doing all the paperwork that's related to them. What we would need to make this happen on the KDEV side is that uh, we would need to have someone to help with the administration of those grants and the uh, support the applications um, for that. And in the first place, research some of those uh, grant opportunities to make them known to people. Um, on the plus side for this here, we would not really need to decide which projects to work on, but um, turn this around and see what's available and what's exciting for people. Um, the administrative overhead would be rather minimal because these lightweight grants are by nature rather low overhead. Um, and we would only be putting work into projects that at least one contributor is really excited about. On the negative side, those are tend to be more short term um, and we might not be able to attract more senior people. Um, and at the end of the day, we're pushing all the risk and most of the administrative overhead to the person that's actually applying to the grant, which is also not so great from an organizational uh, standpoint. The other um, extreme on the uh, grant side uh, is that we could apply for more heavyweight grants and uh, join research consortia and similar things. Um, our experience in the past with this um, has had limited success and the impact on our products, um, there are different opinions on this. Um, we would um, need someone to research opportunities that actually fit our community, available grants um, that we could apply for and then spend quite a lot of resources on actually applying for those grants, which we might never um, receive in the end. On the plus side, this would really help us improve our professional image um, in, in such uh, organizations. And um, we would gain opportunities to push our products into areas where we're usually not. Um, and we would uh, create new uh, collaboration opportunities with external partners. On the negative side, um, these tend to involve a lot of administration and paperwork um, that we tend to shy away from. Um, also, the topics of those grants are usually not set um, by the grantee, but um, a lot of the di direction comes from what is available and what gets funded. So it might not quite fit with what we as a community um, want. And uh, last but not least, uh, getting those grants is not uh, generally easy and the probability of getting them uh, seems generally low. <clears throat> um, second to last uh, opportunity we looked at was um, that KDEV could invest more in building up the ecosystem of uh, companies around KDE. Um, we already uh, do some efforts in this area with the um, Trusted Consultants program, for example, um, but we would have to um, increase the effort there. Uh, we would also need to ensure that there's actually enough business opportunity for those um, companies in our ecosystem uh, to make this attractive. Um, it would probably help if we had someone in KDEV uh, to do business development there and uh, have a place where those uh, consultancies uh, could become aware of uh, opportunities and potentially pool resources if needed for larger projects. 
<clears throat> on the plus side, it would definitely take uh, mean that our uh, organization and products are taken uh, more seriously because we have this company ecosystem around us. And uh, we would not have to deal with much of the administrative tax, hiring, and so on burden that comes um, with a lot of the other opportunities. On the negative side, uh, right now it doesn't seem like there's enough business opportunity going around to really make this attractive for several consultancies around us. Yet. And that brings me to the last one um, we have, which is, or uh, well, the second to last one, sorry, um, which is that we support our community members in uh, fundraising themselves uh, directly via uh, platforms like Patreon. To achieve this, we would need to find some solution that aligns with our vision to make this work and then help our contributors build up their donor base through teaching them how to fundraise well and uh, similar things. On the plus side, this would be rather easy to set up. On the negative side, um, there's the the effort to actually um, fundraise would uh, be pushed towards the person who wants to do the work, uh, taking away a lot of their time because this type of fundraising needs a lot of effort uh, to do all this cheerleading that, um, that goes with it. All the bureaucracy and taxes and so on, we would offload to the contrib contributor, which again is not very nice. Um, and if we really take this to the extreme, we're effectively making uh, several KDE contributors compete against uh, each other, uh, which also does not seem right. Uh, there is a risk that it would make us focus uh, more on the short term than the long term, because the, um, we, it has this um, tendency to focus on, on things that you can show and that are flashy and in the moment. And um, last but not least, it would mean that we would basically be constantly asking our um, user base for money. We would constantly have many different fundraising campaigns going on at the same time. OK, now last opportunity. Uh, KDE EV offers bounties. Bounties um, are a good opportunity to get very specific um, work done. So we would need to figure out how we define this very clearly, what we want to get done, and um, define a process for that. And then we would need to have support from maintainers um, to evaluate submissions if they meet the criteria of, um, of the bounty. Um, and those would, be, would need to be very thorough um, because otherwise there's too much wiggle room and too much um, haggling about, okay, has this bounty now been fulfilled and should it be paid out or not? So on the plus side, um, we would clearly request what we actually need to get done. Um, and it's uh, something that we can start rather small and then scale later, which is very convenient. On the negative side, uh, this is very piecemeal um, and it's hard to make a living off of this. Um, for an individual contributor. It's rather hard and complex to coordinate. And um, the line of what is acceptable as a bounty submission um, is, is hard to define um, and will lead to potentially a lot of squabbling by people who uh, submit um, solutions to bounties. Now, all of these opportunities um, also need to somehow be funded, right? Um, and we said we would rather invest in spaces that um, will build up revenue that sustains efforts um, in the longer run and not to um, constantly need to be fundraising new and again or rely too much on things that are very immediate um, and not longer term sustainable. So the options we looked at here were dedicated fundraising campaigns. Um, so for specific efforts, um, general fundraising, like please support KDE financially, um, continuing to rely on drive-by donations that people give us, 
um, the supporting membership fees, patronships, um, purchases in app stores when people um, download our apps in some of the proprietary app stores, and uh, grants uh, we talked about. And with that, I hand over to Nia Fitters to tell us a bit about the outcomes. Thank you, Lydia, for presenting all that research we did. Sure feels a lot. Um, so, yeah, um, after doing all that research with Lydia and uh, Alaysh and other members of the board, um, we we needed to do something with that. Uh, we talked to a lot of experts, we talked to a lot of people from our community, we figured out some paths we could follow, and then we came down to doing some recommendations. So the proposal we came uh, up with and proposed to the membership uh, is that we believe there are three key areas that it's worth for the EV to invest in going forward. Uh, as you can see, the first one is hardware integration. We talked a lot about this in uh, other talks as well. Um, the, this is about getting our products on various uh, hardware devices and uh, making them work better or making them uh, work and ship in those uh, in that hardware. The second one is app store, app store support. So getting our products in more stores, getting the most out of those stores and trying to figure out how we can improve on that front. And then the third one is hiring someone to work on software development on the basis of, what, of the core technologies that we do. So if we can start quickly uh, going through them, um, what the what the the main thing we want to uh, like uh, have as an outcome from these three positions is that we want to grow our product, right? So we believe that through these three positions we can achieve to increase the momentum around what we are doing. So take our products and our efforts to the next level. We can create more opportunities for uh, more community members to join these efforts that we are already putting in place. And we can drive the revenue in order to make all these uh, new positions sustainable and support them going forward so they can support us in the long term uh, to, for our community to, become, to grow and become more sustainable. So starting from the hardware integration position, this will mostly focus on integrating KD software uh, much better in Tether and form factors we will, the person that we plan to get from this position will be working very closely with our hardware partners. We already have two very important ones like Pine64 and Slimbook. We want to grow, uh, uh, we want to improve the current partnerships we have. We want to grow and uh, gain new partnerships as well. And we believe this person will be a major help in that front by offering better products. It means that our partners will be happy. It means that other partners will want to will gain the interest of other partners and they want to come to us and partner so we, they can grow together so as we mentioned as we improve our current position we build further partnership this means that we can reach even bigger actors in the ecosystem we can make a larger impact as as kde uh, in the in the if i want to say bubbles or in the in the organizations and in the projects around us. We can also be uh, involved in the creation of products. This is very important. If we are there where the hardware is being built, if we are part of the design process, if we are part of setting it up, this means we are playing an active role in the conversation with the end user. It means we are, have a say in how things are delivered to them. And this means we are in much better position than where we currently stand. Moving on to the App Store uh, support position, this is about making certain key products like our applications available on all the leading App Stores and maybe potentially start selling them for a fee. Um, this, the goal of all this is that it will allow us to be reachable outside of the host world. Um, we all know the major App Stores, things like Google Play and Android, Windows Store, the Apple, the App Store, and maybe others that you can think of where we are currently lacking and we can improve in delivering our products in a much wider audience. So the outcome of having a person working de dedicatedly on this is that 
it well it allow people to benefit from our apps so they they will be aware that we are our apps exist people that know about them like maybe if you're a member of KD, the KD community, but you're using maybe Windows on your on your at your workplace, maybe you can now download uh, uh, KD applications to do your job there. I I'm already doing that for things like Ocular, Kate, and all the other applications that are available. Uh, these applications can and will create an entry point for people on these other platforms to be introduced to FOSS solutions, learn about FOSS. Uh, and uh, maybe adopt even more uh, applications, adopt the um, ideology behind it and the way of thinking. Um, we also get an opportunity to, to expand our brand in a broader audience. Of course, all these app stores introduce us to the world. We have, the, we have all the users there that can benefit from our products and our products benefit from them. And of course, it again comes back to creating new revenue streams uh, that the purpose that we're raising these funds, of course, is because we want to invest it back into our community, back into our people, so we can continue and improve our software and our products. The third uh, position is the base software development. Um, when we're talking about this, we're talking about development on the software that most of KDE products rely on and are built upon. We all know that KDE uh, community produces software uh, with some uh, focus on key technologies like uh, Qt, like the KDE frameworks, and maybe other libraries. So the goal of this uh, position is to pay special attention to these um, parts of our software stack. Um, these are usually stacks that our current volunteer base is not very interested or they are not overly attractive for them to uh, start working on. But at the same time, because they are the base of everything we've built, we can all understand why it's good and there are benefits in paying special attention to them and care. Because by improving this base of the developments, it means that our developers can be more productive, more efficient, produce better applications, better products, and in general, enable the whole of the KD community that builds products on top of this um, uh, of the software base to improve and create even more awesomeness. So to, to quickly share some other options we are currently considering, but we feel like it's not the right time to proceed with them. Uh, well, one is bounties. In talking to other software projects and communities that are working with them, it seems like there could be good ways of integrating them. But of course, um, uh, there are challenges, as Lydia mentioned earlier. So we feel we still need to look into them a bit further and then see how we can implement it specifically for our needs. And also, um, we think that the, we're still early in, the, in considering this idea. We need to discuss it with the community, figure out processes, and set in place some way we can take advantage of things like bounties to decide on what people will work on, how we price them, and things like that. The other option we're um, uh, already looking at, but there's still room for growth going forward is grants. Uh, you probably uh, saw Cornelius uh, talk about the Blauer Engel project. We're currently running a product with them, a, a project with them about building environmentally friendly software products. Um, this is a, a, a remunerated, remunerated way for contributors to work on KD products, and so that's a good thing. Um, however, uh, as Lintia mentioned earlier, as part of the challenges of this, um, uh, let's say, option is that depending on how we do it, it can be distracting and it might not be so noticeable to our end users and the users of our main products that what we are doing here. So it's something we're looking into, but we'll see when we, the time comes to implement it. Now, talking about the future again, um, here are the, our next steps. Uh, as you can see, we already, if you are part of the KDEV, we already, you must have already seen uh, this discussion happening in the membership. Uh, we already include, try to include parts of this um, discussion into the costs for the 2020 budget. Uh, in collaboration with the financial working group and the treasurer. We are currently in the process of preparing the job description descriptions and we should be in a position to publish this 
descriptions very soon, starting from the first one. And then we need, of course, to find the right persons. And once they are onboarded, to start gaining and profiting from them. So if I can quick, uh, like share a, like a very high level time plan of what we plan to do. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we should be publishing the first job ad in July. Um, as we have almost all the job descriptions available, we just need to review them. Usually it takes some time to get those, uh, let's say, applications in and then figuring out, filtering the right candidates, starting to making the uh, contact interviews. And we feel like by September we'll be in a position to complete the first hire, so we can then start to publish a second job ad and go through the same process again by the end of the year. If things go well, we'll probably be publishing the third uh, job ad as well in, by the end of the year. It will depend on uh, how the other two positions go. Um, of course, all the time plan you are seeing here, it might change based on the quantity and the quality of the applications we get and how long it takes us to go through them. So, coming to the important part now um, of how you can all help. First of all, apply to the positions. You've been around to the KD community, maybe most of you. If you are not, maybe it's a good chance to join us. If you find there's a position that interests you, it's a great opportunity to contribute even more to KD while being uh, con uh, like paid to work on this, uh, which is great. Um, if you are maybe not interested in this position yourself, maybe you can help us conduct the interviews. This takes up a lot of the time of the board members. It can help us speed up the process and make it more efficient for all of us. So if you feel like you can help us on that front, do reach out to the board and we can, based on the position, maybe you can offer your insight and your experience in order to conduct these interviews. And finally, if none of the above, then uh, once we publish these positions, keep an eye for them and help us spread the word once, once we're out so we can gather and attack people from, uh, from the wider let's say community and the whole of the ecosystem. We, we are very lucky in the past to have applications from people that were in our community. We think it's always helpful, but specifically for these positions, it might make more sense for people that are already close to our, let's say technologies and um, the way we do things. So again, great opportunity if you're already a member and follow Kili closely. Um, so to wrap up, um, uh, join us in the Academy Buff to discuss more on the next step. I see we miss here the, the time of the Buff. Let me be quickly. I can repeat it. Uh, it's <clears throat> the Buff will be on Tuesday, uh, the 22nd at um, 5 p.m. UTC. Awesome. So join us. We'll, me and Lydia will be there and we can discuss more on these things if you are interested. And of course, you can always reach out to the board at any time. If you need questions, clarifications, or have some ideas on how to proceed with this. Thank you. I think this is the final slide. So, yeah, if you have any questions, I see there's some active discussion in the chat already happening. Adam, do we have any questions? Maybe? Um, yes, we do have one, although. Yeah, let me let me read it out. <clears throat> I know currently there are a lot of companies that support open source, but not necessarily free software. How do we make sure that those won't collide with our goal of making digital freedom? So I would say we are in charge of setting the agenda for those three positions. Um, so it's up to us to um, set an agenda that's in line with our vision, and I don't see how we would have a reason not to do that. And also, as, yeah, as we work closely with hardware partners, we are in a better position, as we mentioned earlier, to affect them and maybe try to bring them closer to the way we do things. But as Lydia mentioned, it's up to us to make the choice to partner with people like nobody forces us. Uh, Ingo asks, what amount of hours per week do you plan for the contracts? Uh, per position? I don't think we have 
narrow that down to that for the hours per week. We need to figure this out. If you have ideas, or you can join the both again uh, to discuss about them. Uh, yeah. So it, they are going to be as the other positions part time contact work, but it might vary depending on the availability of the person and what they are willing to work on and things like that. Okay, another one uh, from Cornelius. What are your thoughts on measuring the impact of investments in the development work? I think that's a really good topic we should discuss in the buff um, because obviously we don't want those positions just to be there for the sake of being there, but because um, we want them to, to make it uh, better and, and support our community. So yeah, if, if um, people have specific ideas um, how to narrow it down and how to keep track of that, uh, let's please discuss it in the buff. Okay. And then another one, can we afford hiring senior engineers from example Europe and pay them sufficient to want them to stick around? So I would say we are definitely not going to pay the big bucks <laughs> of um, big companies. Um, I think people have to um, account for the fact that we are a nonprofit organization and that this um, is a, our positions that um, are supposed to help our community and are financed among other things by um, by donations and these um, these partnerships that will develop as part of, of this work. Um, so we're not gonna um, be cheap with people, but it's also not going to make you rich. I think uh, that's understandable. <laughs> okay, that's all the questions we got so far. Thank you very much for this presentation. And uh, I guess everyone joined the BOF on Tuesday. And uh, the topic yeah. will continue there. The questions showed like there's interest, so do join us to discuss this further. We want okay. to gather all the insights from the community and the people that have knowledge to help us on that front. <laughs>